Fear not, my dearest, as I speak to you from the darkness. The candles have all gone out, but you are safe here with me. You are not alone. You are never alone. It is I, your angel of music. I, your longtime companion, your tutor, your friend. Come to me now. Yes, that's right. You can trust me. Believe in me. Come into these arms, and I shall take you to my paradise. Believe in me. And you, my dear, will live forever. You, O oh fiercest primo humo, you, the most handsome creature to ever grace the stage, yes, you. You can be immortal. Come to me now. That's it. Here, closer still, I am right here. There now. You found me. Fate links me to you. We are connected, you and I, forever. <laughs> Come now, walk with me. That's it. Why? Why have you stopped, oh precious muse? Ah, oh, you must be nervous. Here. Let me place this cloak around your shoulders. There's nothing to fear. You needn't be frightened now. Let me put my arm around your waist, that's it. Now, come with me. You, you resist. You dare resist your angel? I, who have come to lovingly guide you through this gateway into... Do not push me away. Give me your wrists. How dare you try to run from me? I, your mentor, your tutor. I, who bent your voice to my will and taught you how to rival the sweetest voices of heaven. You will come with me. I said, fate links us together. Death's dream? <laughs> See how easily I pull you against me and stifle your cries with my hand? How easily I hold you close as you struggle against me? You cannot fight me, my dear. I am immortal, do you hear me? These strong hands that hold you, that silence your mouth, that bind your arms, are the hands of one who cannot die, one of living death. I, the angel of music, cursed and blessed with powers beyond your wildest dreams and terrors, you cannot escape me. As I said before, my sweet, fate links us together forever. You swoon. I see your legs no longer bear you up. Very well, my handsome muse. I shall carry you the rest of the way down into the depths of these caverns where my genius and your voice will swell in harmonious song forever and a day.
Now, now. There's no reason to push me away. There, sir. That's it. Easy now. Easy. You're safe now. I've got you. Pray, tell me, sir, what happened? Oh, you fainted. Were taken? But by who? Angel of Music. Where is he, you ask? There's no one here, sir, except for you and I. I found you just now. You passed out here in the tunnels under the opera. You are safe here with me. I will not harm you. Who am I? It is just me. A nobody. A stranger. A stagehand. Come. Take my hand. Let me help you to your feet. Yes, sir. Are you feeling better? Still woozy, I see. You sway as though you've had too much to drink. Too much cordial, perhaps. Yes, it is dark here underground. The torchlight is dim, the shadows do obscure my face, so forgive me. Where are my manners? This is my horse, Caesar. He is a gentle steed. Oh, look at how he nuzzles you. He likes you. Do you recognize him, sir? Yes. He is the horse that was featured in that opera a few months ago. He seems to know you. You... Ah. Uh -huh. You say you used to sneak out to the opera stables and feed him sugar cubes. <laughs> no wonder he likes you. Here now. Let me lift you up onto Caesar. You still don't look quite stable on your feet. There. I hope you don't mind as I seat myself right behind you, like so, with my arm around your waist, just in case you grow faint again. We have a bit of a journey ahead of us. You are deep underground, and we have only the light of a few torches to guide us on our route. But after a short time, you'll be brought back to the light. Why do you gasp so suddenly? You... you are frightened by these shadows as we pass these old opera props. The broken statues, faded portraits, and broken dolls. The glint of the torch flames dancing across the walls scares you a bit, does it? Or perhaps it is the low moans of the opera furnaces. Their fire lit. Iron groans echoing in the distance. <laughs> You needn't worry, my dear. I know these passageways well. You will be home soon. You know, I heard about the chandelier falling in the opera house tonight. I'm grateful you weren't hurt. Pity about those who were. It seems the opera ghost demanded a sacrifice for the ill way he had been treated. Luckily, you escaped harm tonight. I'd hate to see something so tragic happen to someone so... handsome. Here, sir. We must take a boat the rest of the way. Let me help you down from the horse. There now. This river takes us towards our destination. Just a little more to go. Give me your hand. Good boy. There's a lantern here waiting for us, you see. You can see the way better now. 
Come into this boat with me, that's it. Yes. Now, please, sit as I take the oars and launch us from the landing. You seem nervous under my gaze. Though the shadows and hood obscure my face, my eyes seem as two glints of light peering at you through the darkness. Forgive me. I cannot help but stare at you. You... You, who are such a light in this darkness. A pure rose glowing amongst these sad, dreary thorns. You who shine brighter than the moon. Who commands the attention of the starry heavens with your sweet, angelic voice. How can I not stare at this beautiful creature before me? Is it not natural that a man such as me be compelled to look upon the face of such an enchanting gentleman? <laughs> You're flushed. Such innocence. I have embarrassed you, sir. Please forgive me. Ah, here we are. That building you see before you, built underground in this large cavern, the one rising above us with the illuminated windows, that is where we are going. Give me your hand, sir. You... you hesitate. You do not want to go in with me? But... I found you and saved you. Very well, I will pick you up. <laughs> you are surprised. Here you are, cradled in my arms as I carry you to shore, and you dare let out a scream? Do I scare you too, my dear? Don't be afraid, my sweet. You are in no danger. It is I, the voice. Your angel of music. <laughs> yes, it is me. Your tutor, your angel, your friend. You... You are angry. You are not amused by my little ruse. Am I not what you expected? To see me like this in the flesh? It is no matter. No, no, my dear, don't fight me. Don't struggle. You cannot escape these arms. You cannot escape my gaze. You cannot escape my voice. I will carry you now to your new home. Here. Welcome to my little palace that I've built just for you. Did I not tell you that I would take you from the darkness back into the light? See how many hundreds of candles I have lit for you. The fireplace here in the drawing room is lit for your warmth. And its size rivals the grandest fireplaces in all the chateaus of France. See how I have decorated this palace with ornaments fit for a king. The tapestries, the antique furniture, the paintings. No expense was spared. The opulence before you is merely a taste of the riches I will lay at your feet. Notice the gold chandeliers, the gilded bookcases, the imported vases, the lush blankets and throw pillows. And... Do you see these flowers? The hundreds of blooms bought just for you? An Eden of my design to sweeten the air and complement your beauty. This is a shrine. A shrine to you. To us. To our glorious new life together. You, 
you are still angry with me. Why, my beloved. Huh. <sighs> you dare to try and remove my mask? Give me those delicate hands of yours. Now. There. I have you. And you are trapped in my arms. You can struggle, but I will never let you free. You are in no danger, so long as you do not touch the mask. Now sit there on that chair. I am kneeling now before you. Forgive me for holding your wrists, but you must listen to what I say. Do not get up. It is true what you see before you. I am not an angel, nor a genius, nor a ghost. I am just a man. A man who is deeply, passionately, unequivocally in love with you. I have a name just like any other mortal man. I am Eric. This name was given to me at birth by the woman who would put me in my first mask and dared not to look upon my face. A woman who was my mother in name, but recoiled when I came near. The woman who refused me love, who wouldn't touch me, a small child, who turned me out into the cold and... I am a mortal, just like you, my sweet. I am a man. A man with dreams and desires. A man who has loved you for a long time. I curse myself for having done this to you. For having to drag you deep into my underground world. For being so hideous as to hide behind a mask. But don't you see, my beloved? I have done all of this for love. I have brought you here out of love, you, an ethereal muse. For love, I dared to pluck an angel from the heavens and carry him into the depths of hell. But can you blame me? The heart commands the soul, the mind, the body. I had no choice but to take you, to bring you here, to build a palace and fill it with such fineries as befitting the presence of such ethereal beauty. I kneel before you, a humble, mortal man, and I lay my immense and tragic love at your feet. This home, this heart, this life is yours. I live for you. I would die for you. I would kill for you. There now, don't cry. My dear, you need have no concern as to your fate. You have no better nor more respectful friend in the world than myself. You're alone in the world no more. Your angel is here, with you, forever and always. Here now, you must be tired, my love. Let me lead you to your bedroom. 
As I said, you needn't fear me. I shall not harm you. I only wish you to rest. There. On the bed, lie down. Yes, just like that. Your eyes grow heavy. The excitement of the day has been too much for your body. Your heart must have time to let me in. You'll see. In time you will love me as I love you. Not as a teacher loves his pupil, but as a man loves a man. As a lover loves his beloved. Think of this as my singing carries you off to sleep. Close those eyes. There. Sleep well, my angel. Sleep well. Dream of me and our life that is to come. <laughs> Hello, my sweet. What? Are you surprised to see me? You didn't see me coming through that hidden door behind you? My dear, I am but a phantom after all, a mere ghost. Surely a spectre such as myself has no trouble gliding unseen amongst the living. Now, I have returned, my love, with some... You... You are agitated. You are pacing the room. What... What is wrong? You... You are angry with me. I... Your angel, I who have plucked you from the chorus and raised you up to be an emperor upon the stage, commanding all you survey with the power and beauty of your voice. I who have built this magnificent palace just for you. I who have returned from the world above with packages filled with riches to adorn you. You dare be mad at me? You, you must be hungry, that is all. See these packages before you? I have brought food for you, fit for a god, so lovingly prepared by the best chefs in France. I can see from your state of disarray that you have not yet finished dressing this morning. Not that I mind the peak of your luscious skin through the collar of your nightshirt. Now, for us to eat, you must first dress for the occasion. I brought you shirts and suits from the best shops in Paris. Beautiful silks and brocades worthy of such a prince. This package here holds trinkets of gold, silver, and diamonds. To accentuate the wrists, to beautify these enticing... fingers. <laughs> you pull away and cry out when I kiss your hand. Forgive my boldness, dearest creature. You needn't fear me, my love. I will not tarnish your purity. Not until... I shall leave you to dress so that we might dine together. 
Here. I shall set my pocket watch for you. Shall we say 30 minutes? We shouldn't take too long, my darling, for this delicious food will get cold. I will await your arrival in the dining room. Do not make me wait too long. Yeah, me. I... A god stands before me. You are most radiant, my love. With the brilliance that outshines the surrounding candlelight. Please, have a seat. There. See this feast laid before you? Perhaps it is too much for two people, but... Oh, nothing is too extravagant for such beauty. Here, let me serve you. There now. You must have quite the appetite. Please, eat. That's it. Good boy. Some wine, my dear? It is not as sweet as those lips that will drink it, but I dare say this nectar will bring a smile. There. Do you like it? I brought it personally from the cellars of Konigsberg in Prussia. I wanted to save it for such a special occasion. One where I had someone to share such pleasures with. Do not flinch, my dear, and do not come near you to harm you. Forgive me, my angel, as I kneel before you, here as you dine. I swear, this will be the last time I say this to you, unless by the grace of heaven you bid me say it again. I... I love you, my darling. I love you with all my soul, with every cell of this broken visage before you. Ever since you first stepped foot in the opera, the first note you uttered, I breathed in your silken song and forever became your slave. My life, my all is yours, and I lay all that I am, as unworthy as I am, at your feet to do with as you please. Only be mine. Be mine. And I shall shower you with the wealth of a thousand cities. Be mine. And I will worship the ground you walk on. Be mine. And only mine. And love me. Love only me, for I, your poor Eric, love you more than any man has ever loved another man. For how could one love a god with a mere imperfect love? Shh, no. No, don't say anything. There, I said my piece. I will not make such gentle overtures again unless you bid me to fill your sweet ears with more passionate utterances of my great and tragic love. Now then, you have a question to ask? When shall I let you go? <laughs> five days, my dear. In five days' time, you'll be free for you will learn to see me as a man, one forever in love with you, rather than a ghost of phantasm. In five days you will learn how to love me, and love only me. Then, and only then, shall I let you go, for I know 
you will come to visit your poor Eric again, and again, and again. So, how shall we pass the time? What else do two men in love do but indulge in the pleasures that ignite their passions? What sweet music we shall make, my love. You have finished eating. Here, my dear. Give me your hand. Let me help you up. For I wish to show you the rest of your new home. You recoil from my touch. Is this hand so hateful to you? You say it is cold and vile against your skin. Very well. Please forgive my presumption. Now, let me hold the door for you as I show you through these halls. And that concludes our tour. Save for this one room, if you care to see it. Please, step inside. This is my bedroom. It is rather curious. You cross into the room without hesitation. You see these walls are hung with black fabrics. The upholstery upon the furniture is black too. The black curtains on the windows, the black carpets on the floor, are very befitting a ghost, are they not? Yes. I dare say they are very fit for one who is... dead. What lies behind these red curtains in the center of the room? Draw them yourself and see. That is where I sleep. You see, my dear, one has to get used to everything in life, just as you must get used to the touch of my flesh against yours. Don't move as I slide my arm around your waist. This is where you belong. Here with me, here. In my chambers. You only need to get used to it, my love. Just as you've gotten used to my voice, you will get used to my touch. You turn your face away from me. Ah, your gaze is drawn to the organ on the far side of the room. You ask about the compositions you pick up, the sheets of music written in red. Yes, I compose sometimes. I began that work twenty years ago. When I have finished, I shall take it away with me in that coffin and never wake up again. I must work at it as seldom as you can, you say. I sometimes work at it for fourteen days and nights together, during which I live on music only, and then I rest for years at a time. You ask if I will play you something out of my Don Juan Triumphant. You must never ask me that. I will play you Mozart, if you like, which will only make you weep, but my Don Juan, Christine... Burns, and yet he is not struck by fire from heaven. You see, my dear, there is some music that is so terrible that it consumes all those who approach it. Fortunately, you have not come to that music yet, for you would lose all your pretty coloring, and nobody would know you when you return to Paris. Let us sing something from the opera, my sweet. Excellent, my dear. What fine music we make together. 
Surely you can see how fate has bound us together. Such a lovely duet. Why, with you by my side, I... Wait, what are you doing? My love, don't touch the mask. I warned... Ah! Ah! Is... Is this what you wish to see? This... Horror! This death's head. The vase of red death. This... This nightmare before you? You wish to unmask my rage? The fury of a demon? You fall to your knees? Fine. I'll lean in close so that you may see this demon face. Look at me! I am the face of Red Death. My eyes are of one who is dead. Look at them! There is no light reflected in these eyes. Black, demonic pools, not eyes, fill these sockets. Only in complete darkness will you ever see these eyes ablaze with light. Look! This is what you want to see? Then see what lay buried under this mask. Don't turn your head away. Feast your eyes. Glut your soul on my cursed ugliness. Look at Eric's face! Now you see the face of the voice. You weren't content to merely hear me, eh? You wanted to know what I looked like? Oh, you are so inquisitive for a man. Well, are you satisfied? A very good-looking fellow, eh? When a man has seen me, as you have, he belongs to me. He loves me forever. I am his Don Juan. Look at me, my dear. I am Don Juan Triumphant. <laughs> you turn away and beg for mercy. But it only makes me want you more. You will not come to me? Very well. I shall grab you by the hair and force you to come to me. <clears throat> oh, I frighten you, do I? I dare say. Perhaps you think that I have another mask, eh? And that this, this, my head is a mask? Well... <clears throat> If you think this is a mask, tear it off as you did the other. Come, I insist. Your hands, your hands. Give me your hands. There, put them on my face. Dig your fingers into my skin. Let your nails tear into my dead flesh to know that I am real. up of death from head to foot, and that it is a corpse that loves you and adores you, will never, never leave you. Look, I am not laughing now. I am crying. Crying for you, my darling, who has torn off my mask, and who therefore can never leave me again. As long as you thought me handsome, you could have come back. I know you would have come back. But now that you know my hideousness, you would run away for good. So I shall keep you here. Oh, why did you want to see me? Oh, my maddening muse. You who wanted to see me. When my own father never saw me, 
and when my mother, so as not to see me, made me a present of my first mask, now you... I shall leave you now. Leave you to your own reflections. I shall go work on my music until... Wait. What did you say? Do you want me to show you my face without fear? You think... You think I am sublime? Me? Your shivers are not out of repugnance or fear. You, you say you shudder at the splendor of my genius? Oh, my love. Can this be true? Forgive me. I, I sink to my knees to hear you say it. I love you, my God. I love you. I am not worthy to kiss the hem of your jacket. I am but your faithful slave, master. I shall attend to your every desire. I am yours. Body and soul, as you are mine. Perhaps someday I shall let you go, but only when I know you will come back to me. You must always come back to me, my love. Fate has bound us together. 